Hi, this is Sherilyn Smith from the Department of Pediatrics at University of Washington. And this video continues the series about BZV and we'll focus on diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. These are the learning objectives. Appropriately order and interpret diagnostic tests for BZV infection and describe the role of treatment and vaccination in BZV infection. The diagnosis of BZV infection is based on clinical presentation, clues from the history and physical the progression of the rash from papule to vesicle to crusting, as well as the distribution are the most important factors to focus on. This approach may lead to overdiagnosis of BZV because other rashes look like BZV, but few have all the characteristics. PCR may be done on vesicular fluid in atypical cases where the diagnosis isn't certain and there's an important need to know the diagnosis, such as in an immunocompromised patient or an exposure of an immunocompromised patient. The most common reason for atypical presentation is varicella developing in a previously immunized patient. This table outlines the different tests you can do when you need to do testing. As I said before, varicella PCR is sensitive and specific and is the diagnostic test of choice if available. Other tests, such as zinc smear or direct fluorescent antibody tests for the virus are less sensitive, and VZV doesn't grow well in culture, so this modality really isn't an option. Antibody tests can indicate previous exposure, or if the level is rising between two different sam samples, acute and convalescent specimens, this gives evidence that there was an acute infection. The mainstay of treatment in healthy children is symptom control and prevention of complications like skin infection. An antiviral agent should be used in patients with increased risk for poor outcomes due to BZV infection, including adolescents and adults, and immunocompromised patients. The drug commonly used for BZV treatment is acyclovir. It works by inhibiting viral DNA polymerase, but the BZV is less sensitive to acyclovir than HSV, so we have to use a higher dose. The mechanism of resistance is the same for both viruses as shown in the table. Famcyclovir is an alternative that you may also see used. For patients with zoster, antiviral medications, acyclovir, valacyclovir, famcyclovir, speed the resolution of the rash and decrease the rate of post-herpetic neuralgia, particularly in older patients. Pain management is critical for the management of this illness. The great news is that we have a highly effective vaccine for both varicella and zoster. The varicella vaccine is a live attenuated viral vaccine derived from the OCA varicella strain. It was first developed in the, in the 1970s in Japan and was successfully used there first. It was licensed in, in the US in 1995 and since that time there has been a dramatic decrease in the number of cases of varicella. There are two forms of this vaccine, the varicella vaccine by itself and a combination vaccine administered with measles, mumps, and rubella. People receive a primary and a booster shot and this combination prevents somewhere between 88 and 98% of varicella cases. Since this is a live viral vaccine, you should not give this to immunocompromised or pregnant patients. This graph shows an example of how the VZV vaccine is impacting the number of cases of varicella we see. The red line represents the percent vaccine coverage and the blue bars are the varicella cases. Overall, there has been more than an 80% decline in VZV cases, greater than a 95% decline in hospitalizations, and a similar decline in deaths due to VZV. The vaccine for zoster is also the OCA strain, but given at a higher concentration than the varicella vaccine and is recommended for everyone over 60 years of age, which is when we see anti-VZV memory declining below the threshold for control. In a clinical trial involving more than 38,000 adults, 60 years of age or older, the vaccine reduced the overall incidence of shingles by 51% and the incidence of post-herpetic neuralgia by 67%. The efficacy of the vaccine in preventing shingles was higher in the younger age group, those people 60 to 69 years of age, with a vaccine efficacy of 64%, than in the older age group, people who were older than 70 years, and a vaccine efficacy of 38%. This difference is due to the poor T-cell response to the vaccine in the older patients. 
As I indicated, you can't give live vaccine to certain patients, but you can provide passive immunization by giving antibodies directed against BZD if there is an exposure. We save this approach for immunocompromised patients like those with cancer, pregnant women, and babies born to moms who develop varicella around the time of delivery. In some instances, we gave acyclovir to stop viral replication early in the course of infection. In summary, the diagnosis of varicella zoster infections is usually done on a clinical basis. But if a diagnostic test is needed, PCR analysis of the vesicular fluid is the most sensitive test available. Symptom treatment is indicated for all patients, and we give acyclovir to patients with increased risk of severe disease and those with zoster. Prevention with the use of live attenuated viral vaccine is effective and, rep and recommended to prevent both primary and reactivation disease.